Hey puzzle friends, how's it going? Welcome back, or if you're new, I'm GB and welcome to my channel. This is a place for anyone who loves puzzles, whether you're new to puzzling or you consider yourself an expert. Today I'm gonna to be trying out this beautiful Wentworth wooden puzzle. This one's called Water Drop, and as you can probably see, it's a gorgeous rainbow gradient. It also features, as the name suggests, these water drops here, and then that turns into a ripple design. Um, so this is also actually gonna be my first ever Wentworth wooden puzzle, so I'm pretty excited about that. Um, Pretty much when I first saw this design on Instagram, it was love at first sight, of course, no surprises there. And it's actually, I think one of three or four sort of rainbow like inspired designs that they put out around the same time. Um, this one's also only 287 pieces, but even though that's a pretty small piece count normally, they consider it extra difficult and that's the same with the other rainbow designs. And um, from what I understand, uh, normal Wentworth puzzles are sort of a combination of like irregular piece shapes and then like cute little whimsy pieces. But these extra difficult ones are made up of these sort of like very similar geometric shapes all the way through. So yeah, I'm pretty excited to try this one out. And because uh, normally I would consider sort of a rainbow gradient design like in a normal 1000 piece puzzle to be a fairly straightforward, fairly easy like designed to put together. So it's gonna be quite interesting to see if, you know, this sort of simple gradient combined with the uh, geometric shape pieces is actually gonna be quite tricky and how challenging it's gonna be. So in a sec, let's unbox this and have a closer look at the pieces and then get into some puzzling. So let's uh, have a look at the packaging and then we'll open it up. So we've got here, of course, the beautiful image of the puzzle. And it actually says here, uh, this puzzle has an uneven edge as shown. So that's interesting to note. Um, we've got the logo, um, the piece count and the extra difficult, the name. Um, it's also got the artist name, which is Eduard. I think that's how you say it. And then it also says premium quality laser cut wooden jigsaw featuring a challenging extra difficult cut pattern. And then let's see on the sides, we've got here the logo again. Um, we've got the logo, um, a bit of sort of, I guess, like a little mini blurb made in Great Britain, the Wentworth Wood and Jigsaw Company Limited, and then the sort of where it's located. And then it's got, I guess, these little taglines, ingenious cut, charming whimsies, devilish fun. So it's kind of cute. Another logo. And then I guess this is more for storing it. So you've got the logo, the picture, the piece count, barcode, I guess, and again, the little taglines. And then there's a little bit of info on the back too. Um, again, the logo. Then we've got a little bit of blurb about sort of the company. Um, what else? Oh, and it sort of talks about, um, I guess it says we, happy puzzle is happy planet. We aim to spread happiness and be sustainable in all that we do. So this puzzle is made using wood from forests that are sustainably managed and the box is made from recycled materials. No plastic was used in our packaging process and we are doing all we can to minimize the energy we use and recycle the waste we create. So that's kind of cool. Nice to know that they're making the effort to have a more sort of sustainable, environmentally friendly product. Um, so yeah, and then just a little bit more of a blurb sort of about their puzzles. So yeah, a lot of useful and nice information. So let's open this up. So yep, just blank on the inside of the box. Also the box is reasonably sturdy, like it is a little bit bendy, but um, still feels pretty strong, I guess. So, you know, I don't think it's gonna get squashed too easily or anything like that. And then inside we have this gorgeous little, I guess, drawstring bag in the sort of, I guess this is the, the sort of burgundy purpley color is like, the Wentworth official color, which is like what's in their logo. And it's got their lovely logo printed on the front and this sort of rope, which is kind of nice actually. Um, although I've got like quite a few puzzles that have like, I guess, zipper fabric bags and things like that. And I've never seen one that has like this sort of nice little rope drawstring effect. So that's kind of nice. And then that's a nice sound too of like all the wooden pieces in there. And then we've just got here I guess a little leaf, double-sided leaflet, again, about information about their puzzles and, oh, and that you can also get personalized puzzles from them, which is kind of nice to know. That could make a really cool gift, I think. Um, and then not much else, I guess that's just like a serial number or something printed inside. So yeah, pretty straightforward. Um, so I'm just gonna open this up 
but we will have a closer up look at the pieces of course but I'm just curious to sort of see so yeah the pieces are I don't know if you can see but they're, they're not wrapped in any plastic they're just loose inside this bag and yeah they look pretty interesting so let's have a closer look So, I guess like a lot of wooden puzzles, the first thing I notice is actually that very uh, wood fire, campfire sort of smell, which I personally don't mind at all. I think it's kind of, I guess, cozy and comforting and I don't know, it doesn't, yeah, it smells fairly pleasant to me, but I can understand some people might not be super keen on it. So just, just to note. Um, and yeah, the puzzle pieces look very pretty and colorful and candy-like, so they're very vibrant, like, the printing looks very like yeah bright and clear and everything um so yeah the first thing i after that i guess is what i notice is these like pieces are a lot look very similar like they a lot seem to be this kind of interesting um yeah this sort of weird three point kind of geometric shape um oh i guess i should also let's talk about the actual pieces as well so yeah so one side we have the lovely colored print on it. Um, it's sort of like a little bit glossy, but not very, very subtly glossy. Um, so a tiny bit of sheen. I guess that's just sort of however the color is applied to it, whether it's a paint or a sort of a stuck on print, I'm not too sure. And then the reverse is just sort of the plain wood color. And then uh, the sides are a bit darker, which is like sort of looks a bit like where it's been scorched a little bit from the laser cutter, which is pretty normal. Um, seems like a fairly nice thickness too. Like, I even though these little points are sort of thin looking, they feel pretty strong. Like, I think you'd have to put in a lot of force to actually break one of these, I think. So yeah, they, they're definitely very sturdy. They don't seem flimsy. They're not super chunky, but yeah, not, not at all flimsy. So I think these should be pretty nice to puzzle with. Um, so yeah, going back to the shape of them. Yeah, they're this sort of tri-point shape. Um, and I guess they sort of fit into each other like this. Um, but I've noticed a few other shapes, like there's these sort of odd ones where it's sort of got part of the like tri-point and then a bit of a, a weird irregular part and then a flat piece. Um, and then there's like one, like this is a quite an irregular one and it doesn't have a flat side, it has a sort of dip in it. So I'm guessing these are still both edge pieces. So if we look at our box here i'm guessing like this blue one is probably from up here on this flat side whereas maybe this red one is like one of these red sort of little dips on this side here so yeah i'm going to guess that they're kind of edge pieces um so don't know okay so there's also little pieces like this where it's like almost just part of one of those uh tri-point shapes the same with this like so that's yeah so but apart from that there doesn't seem to be too much variation just sort of trying to see if there's like you know whether all these tri-points are the same or not like it kind of looks like they are oh maybe not actually when i look at this one it's this and this point look very similar but then i look at this and it's got this weird little irregular bump here so yeah i'm assuming that's supposed to be there so it's quite interesting oh and actually this one looks different too so we've got here two sides that look very similar to this and then a yeah very different sort of side even different to this one so i guess there are subtle variations in these pieces and yeah here's another one so noticing them more and more but there are for the most part a lot do seem to just be this kind of they look pretty similar so i guess a lot have the same three points but then some have like a different size or shaped point if that, i don't know if, if you want to call it a point or what you'd call these three bits but i'm calling them points even though they're not really but yeah so that's interesting so i guess 
that could be more tricky to put it together or maybe it'll make it easier to figure out where they go. So yeah, but definitely quite interesting and a little bit sneaky because yeah, at first glance, you don't really think that they're different. They all look the same, but yeah, a little bit sneaky. So very interesting. Um, so I think I'm going to start sort of sorting this and then putting it together. So, I mean, how I normally sort rainbow gradients is pretty much by the color sections. And I think this is probably no exception for the, at least for the initial stage of sorting. So I'm thinking I might even like to me, the yellow really stands out and it's also quite a small section. So maybe that's a good place to start. I could be completely wrong here, but yeah, maybe yellow, maybe green. Normally they're the colors that give me the most trouble, but they actually seem very clear in this image. So whereas it's sort of like these reddy pinks might be a bit difficult and this sort of blue to purpley pink looks very mixed, less clear than these sections. So I feel like that might be the, it's also kind of the largest section. So that might be the most tricky. I'm not too sure, but um, at, having a wild guess, I would say this part's going to be maybe the most difficult to put together. So I think, um, yeah, I might start flipping over the pieces. And as I do, I'll just, I guess, put the yellows together. So I'm also like some of the yellows are obviously different shades, but I think if they're this sort of orangey yellow, I'll still put them in the yellow section, I guess. So I can see quite a lot. So we'll pop all those together. And I'll just sort of try and turn over pieces as we go as well. So I'm gonna take over the a whole part of this table in a second can be covered in puzzle pieces, but that's okay. I feel like for me, that's kind of the best approach to wooden puzzles. I'm not too sure how else to go about doing them. So if anyone has any ideas or tips on how they like to sort of sort and where they like to put their wooden puzzle pieces as they sort them, let me know. I'm kind of, I haven't done a whole heap, so I'm sort of interested in what other people like to do. Um, so this one's a bit of a tricky piece because it's got a bit of green, but also yellow, but I'd say it's more yellow. So I guess we'll pop it with the yellows. I suppose it doesn't matter all that much if, you know, something ends up being more green than yellow or whatever, you know, as long as you can figure out where it goes in the puzzle eventually. So that's the main thing, I suppose. And I guess, you know, you've got to sort however suits you, I think, like whatever works, whatever system works for you, I see. also fun hearing these click on the table that's always something nice about wooden puzzles is like they have a very uh, distinct sort of sound and it's just a really different experience than a normal sort of wooden puzzle I guess so yeah it's kind of a nice little treat to be doing a wooden puzzle again So I'm just going to continue pretty much turning off over all of these. Um, yeah, making a big, big mess, uh, puzzle chaos. And um, uh, see, are these green or yellow? I don't know. Stripey. Um, yeah, so continue turning these over and, and then probably try and work on this yellow section, I think. I think after yellow, I might do green. I'm not too sure. Let's see what takes my fancy. Who knows, knowing me, I probably changed my mind halfway through anyway. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna start piecing this together once I've sorted these all out. And um, yeah, and then I think maybe partway through we'll stop for a bit of a chat and just a bit of a catch up and see how I'm finding it and let you sort of know, yeah, how things have been going. Um, so yeah, let's, uh, I guess let's continue sorting and then I'll get into some puzzling.
So I figured this was probably a good point to sort of stop and have a quick little chat and catch up. Um, so I feel like I've done a fairly good amount of the puzzle and this so far it's taken me like about an hour and a bit, like probably less than an hour and a quarter, I would say. Um, so, I mean, I guess this is only 287 pieces. So I think that's like still a significant amount of time to do only this much of that. But um, yeah, so it's definitely a tricky puzzle, um, but I'm definitely enjoying it too. I'm like really loving um, like how it's coming together and even just seeing the pieces laid out on the table sort of sorted roughly into their, their colors, I think looks really pretty. Um, so yeah, really, yeah, I'm really loving how it looks. And I actually really like these shapes. They look really like, like pretty and very like, I don't know, they just look really cool, I thought. Um, so yeah, so, so far, like it kind of definitely meets my standards in terms of a wooden puzzle. Like, you know, you can, it shifts around pretty easily. Um, that's just sort of the nature of like, um, like laser cut wooden puzzles. Like they sort of have this movement in them, which is very normal. And um, sometimes like it's a bit means like trying to take pieces out or put them in. As you can see, it kind of can get stuck a little bit. So sometimes you actually have to sort of hold it still with one hand and then pop in a piece. Uh, and then sometimes you pull out pieces like that. So there's a few little tricky bits like that that are happening with this puzzle, which just tend to happen with all wooden puzzles that I've sort of played with. Um, the other thing I noticed when I stopped was my hands were, they were a little bit dusty. Um, I, I think that's pretty normal as well with a lot of wooden puzzles. I, maybe it's just from the, like, the scorched edge where it's been laser cut, it leaves a bit of this sort of black dust, but it just washes off, so no big deal. Um, but in terms of like how the design's coming together, um, I've definitely found, I mean, it's probably pretty obvious, but this, obviously the drops were very easy to spot and these sort of like ripple lines are very like, the pieces that have those on are a lot easier to spot and put together than other parts of the puzzle. Um, and it w just wasn't, as straightforward as putting in a nice big yellow stripe. Although when I like look at the box, you know, you sort of see a very distinct yellow. Um, when you're up close in the pieces, it feels a lot more muddy and harder to differentiate between like what piece goes where and which goes here and which goes where. So yeah, um, it definitely doesn't look, yeah, when you're dealing with like the picture, uh, this, I guess, blown up to this sort of size, um, and you're, you know, you're right up in the pieces, it's definitely a lot trickier to tell where one color starts and ends than like just looking at the box. Um, so yeah, it was very kind of murky around here. And, and also like, I really had to, you probably saw, but I had to start s sorting the reds and oranges together with the greens and the yellows. Like it just wasn't as simple as this pile's yellow, this one's green and this one's red. Like they kind of merge into each other, even up here. Like there's some pieces that have all three, like green, yellow, and red. So yeah, it wasn't just that simple. Um, and then the other thing that's, yeah, I kind of didn't expect is this whole section here. And I'm gonna guess it's gonna start happening in the bluey section too. So I guess uh, further out, where like, I guess the far part of the ripple, like around here, it's kind of, I don't know, it's very unclear. There's no, like the sections are very, there's a, like lots of little tiny lines and reflections. There's no clear lines. And so even now I've been like putting in a lot of reds and the oranges and yellows and then having to take them out because I wasn't sure if it was the right one. And then finding another piece that seemed to fit there better. and. So unless like there's like a clear sort of ripple like line or a clear like highlight or something, it can be really tricky. Like I'm still not quite sure if this is completely correct what I've placed. I think it is, but like, yeah, so it gets a bit tough trying to figure out like what goes where. Um, so I'd say the red so far has been definitely the trickiest and even actually starting off some of these yellows were a bit tricky but that was more just 
I guess, like beginner struggles of trying to figure out getting comfortable with how this puzzle sort of goes together and figuring out how the shapes work and things like that. I feel like that sort of happens with a lot of puzzles where it takes you a little bit of time to just sort of build some familiarity with the puzzle um, and how the pieces and shapes fit together. Um, but yeah, so would I say it's ultra challenging? No, it's sort of, I feel like, kind of a fun, comfortable level of challenge. Like it's definitely challenging and it's definitely taking way longer than if I was to do, obviously, if I was to do just a regular ribbon cut puzzle in 287 pieces. So, yeah, but um, but yeah, I, I'm really enjoying it, actually. So, you know, I'm looking forward to getting these beautiful, like, blues and purples and pinks and getting those sorted. Um, so, like, let's do a little bit more puzzling. So I kind of left some of these ones out here with stripes because you can kind of see, like, the stripes the lines on this one are quite distinct so you can kind of quite easily figure out where that goes whereas this one it sort of goes in here somewhere I think but I've been struggling to figure out where um, sort of one of these very murky blurry type ones it does have like a little bit of something on the edge there but I'm not too sure yet whereas this one's got some like fairly distinct lines so I so even now I'm not too sure I think it no, no. Ah, here we go. It goes down here. This one's, this one's got some lines on it too. So where does it go? Maybe here, I think. See what I mean? It's a little bit with wooden puzzles, you sometimes have to jiggle them a little bit to get the piece in. So these ones I'm not, that one looks like, okay, yeah, that one has got a bit of a highlight there. So it's a bit easier to sort of spot where it goes. This one, I still don't know. It's probably very obvious and I just can't figure. Oh, actually, does it go there? No. So that's a bit tricky. Actually, I'm not sure this piece. Oh, okay, I see what's happened here. There you go. I've got that piece in the wrong spot. And there we go. I think we have solved this problem, perhaps. Ah, jiggle. Okay. Aha, uh -huh, there we go. That's better. And so let's see, let's pull out over here. I'm going to come back to these reds because I, I feel like they're like, I need to sort of study them a bit more closely, I think. I think also it just depends on your lighting. Some, I've, I've got some light shining here, so some pieces here have been a bit tricky to see, like when I've had greens. So um, definitely try and, if you do one of these puzzles, try and do it under some, pick a light that's going to not make things hard to see, I guess. So I think that goes there, but it's definitely been quite addictive doing this puzzle too. So um, I had to like really stop myself because I think I could have just kept going and finish it, um, which would not have been helpful. But yeah, I'm quite pleased as well, like uh, with the, the colors, I think they look really pretty. Um, like the quality of the pieces is really nice. So yeah, definitely enjoying my first um, Wentworth puzzle experience that's for sure so you know definitely looking forward to some of my other Wentworth puzzles as well like not uh, I've got a couple others that I got um, I think on their Boxing Day sale that are just I guess they're sort of more normal range of puzzles so that's going to be kind of a new and interesting experience for me as well okay I feel like this goes here no nope, absolutely does not go there Where do you go? Maybe there? And I think, ah, this one goes here. So, um, yeah, I don't have too much more to tell you at the moment. Um, so I think I'm going to get back into, um, well, finishing this off because I don't think it's going to take uh, too much longer, really. I sort of feel like I've gotten into the swing of things and I sort of feel like I've, yeah, found my groove a little bit, like... I'm getting a lot quicker at this than when I first started. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna continue on and finish it and then I'll come back and we'll have a bit of a chat and some final thoughts on the whole like puzzling experience.
So I'm back and I finished this beautiful rainbow gradient puzzle and I have to say I actually had a lot of fun putting this challenging little puzzle together and I really love how it's turned out. I think it's just really pretty to look at. Um, yeah, the image is like a very fun and vibrant and colourful um, and you know it was a puzzle that I could get done in the afternoon without it taking too long but it was still pretty challenging and tricky. So all up, it took about two and a half hours or maybe just a bit under. So I guess that for me is sort of the equivalent of if I was doing like a challenging regular 500 piece puzzle, like not a wooden one, but just a standard cardboard one, one that was like on the challenging side that would sort of take me about similar kind of time. So yeah, I kind of quite like that it's uh, pretty challenging and tricky, but I did it in two and a half hours. So just a you know, you can do this in a session or like a little in the afternoon or over a couple of quick sessions or something like that. So yeah, I really like that aspect of it. Uh, definitely good for impatient puzzlers like me who don't want to spend days and weeks on some challenge puzzle. Um, so let's sort of talk pros and cons. Like pros, like I said, uh, nice and quick, uh, looks gorgeous, you know, beautiful colors. Um, I really like the piece cut like I think it's really clever whoever designed it like did a really great job of designing these sort of geometric shapes that go together really well and then these like cool interesting ones on the edge they yeah so it's like a really fun challenging and unique design so I think that's really cool um what else I feel like in terms of like a wooden puzzle it definitely met my expectations like the pieces they have that sort of loose wobbly fit but that's kind of how all laser cut wooden puzzles go together so that definitely fit my expectations um, yeah so I think in terms of cons um, there were a few um, some are more like not necessarily cons but like maybe it would bother you depends um, so the first one is that these sort of sections here were pretty tricky and challenging to be honest I'm not even sure these are all completely in the correct spots <laughs> Um, it was just, yeah, really hard. Like all these little, um, like reflections in the water just made putting this section together really tricky, but Hey, I got there in the end and was able to finish the puzzle and I like how it looks and had still had fun. So it was a little frustrating, but not enough to sort of put me off from like finishing the puzzle or anything like that. Um, another thing was there was a little bit of dust, so I did have to wash my hands afterwards. So just to me it's not really an issue but maybe it bothers you but I feel like I can get dusty hands doing like a normal puzzle or any other wooden puzzle puzzle too so it seems pretty normal um and then one other thing was that like the it's not exactly glossy but sometimes the way the light hits the pieces means you can't see the color of the piece so just something to be aware of like maybe you might have to play around with your lighting a little bit um, I have this issue with other wooden puzzles with like a similar sort of finish. Um, so yeah, it's not glossy, but it's just has a bit of a sheen to it. So yeah, I guess just something to be aware of that your lighting could affect your puzzling. And then I guess the last thing that to me is a con is that um, one piece here, there's like a little white like dot in the corner, like a little splatter, I guess. And it's very tiny and almost barely noticeable. And at first I thought like maybe it's part of the puzzle image, like a splatter of water or something. But then I realized like, no, it's actually sort of a printing fault. So what I think might have happened is like when they were applying the like ink to the surface of the puzzle, maybe there was like an air bubble or some little piece of like debris or something which stopped the color like touching the surface. So that's my sort of theory as to why there's that little white bit there. I mean, it doesn't really bother me too much. Um, it's, it is, thankfully, it's in like a lighter part of the puzzle because obviously if it was up here, you'd probably really notice it, which would be a bit of a pain. Um, it's just a little di bit disappointing that, uh, you know, you expect very high level of quality when you're buying a Wentworth puzzle because they're very high end. So maybe it's something the company can just like be a little bit more aware of when doing like quality control to look out for things like that. But it's a pretty minor issue, but you know, like, yeah, obviously you, you want your puzzle to look as perfect as possible, especially when it's a very special puzzle. 
Um, so let's talk price. Um, yes, speaking of high end and special, that's what these puzzles are. They are very high end. Um, so on their website, this was £37.50 and that ends up being approximately like 50 US dollars and roughly 70, 71 Australian dollars. So very expensive puzzle. Um, it's probably like one of the most pricey or expensive puzzles that I own. Um, and also something to consider if you're like outside of the UK, you are probably paying for shipping. I don't know what it's like for the US, but from UK to Australia, it's pretty expensive. Thankfully, I, it was divided for me between this and a couple of other puzzles, but it's still something to factor in if you're going to get one of these. Um, so yeah, for that price, like, I mean, I guess you're get, getting a beautiful puzzle, pretty good quality. Um, you know, you're getting like some really nice images. They have a really great range of images, um, even including in this like extra difficult series. There's a few different fun ones to choose from. And you know, you're getting a fairly unique design for your money as well. Like I haven't seen this design um, anywhere else. Like I'm sure there probably are some wooden puzzles out there that have some sort of geometric pieces, but I haven't seen any really, and I haven't seen any like this. So, you know, you're paying for like that sort of design that's fairly unique to their company. Um, and you know, you're also paying for nice packaging. Um, you get your like very nice box with the little Wentworth logo. So it looks nice on your shelving and you get the drawstring bag with the logo inside as well. Um, but you know, I think also for that price, you're definitely paying for like name and reputation. Like Wentworth is a very like well-known, uh, reputable puzzle company that's been around for a while. They're known for having good quality puzzles and puzzles that have really beautiful designs. So I think, you know, in a way you're definitely paying, you have to sort of acknowledge, I think that you're not just paying for a pretty and nice quality puzzle and nice packaging. You are paying for like, essentially like a designer puzzle name as well or at least that's how I see it I guess let me know what you think um, so you know would I recommend it um, despite like it being expensive I would still say yes I think it's a really cool puzzle um, it's definitely different to any puzzles that I've done before and it's probably been one of my favorite challenge puzzles like I'm a really impatient puzzler so being able to do a puzzle that is still sort of tests me and challenges me and gets me thinking, but being able to do it in a really short amount of time makes me very happy. <laughs> so I, yeah, I think this is like a really fun, cool puzzle. I really had a good experience doing it and I've never like seen any puzzles quite like this before. So yeah, so I'm definitely also keen to like try out others from this series, um, you know, and I actually hope that they do like going forward, they do make more sort of extra difficult puzzles and I'm like, you know, interested to see what future designs they'll make in that sort of difficult series. Like, so yeah, I definitely would be keen to try more because I really enjoyed this and I can see myself doing this multiple times. So, you know, I think it's definitely like, even though it is a really high price point, like if it's a sort of puzzle that you think you're going to keep in your collection for a long time and do over and over again, I think, you know, it's going to be worth it. And especially if it's one that you might pass on to other family members or, you know, it, another option if you you know didn't want to pay that full price is you could like get a few friends to go in on the puzzle and then have it as almost like a shared puzzle that you pass around and so I've definitely heard of people doing that with other expensive puzzles so that's definitely an option um, yeah but I mean obviously the price point is still something that it's not accessible to everyone like it's there's just going to be puzzles out there who either just can't afford that price or just don't want to invest that much in their puzzling experience and that's I think that's totally acceptable and fine like you know you've got to pick a puzzle that suits you whether it's design price quality whatever um, but you know if you yeah, if you're looking to splurge or you're looking for something very special whether it's a gift or something to keep in your family or you're like a puzzle collector um, I think you know it's definitely a really cool puzzle to have in your collection so I think that I've sort of said everything I wanted to um, so I guess in the comments below let me know what you thought of this puzzle 
Did you like it? Um, could you see yourself doing like this one or have you done any of their challenge puzzles? Um, you know, maybe you're like me and you're very impatient and but you're still sort of interested in doing these sort of challenges. Uh, maybe this could be a good one for you or maybe you absolutely hate challenge puzzles. Anyway, I guess let me know in the comments below your your thoughts and experience on these sorts of puzzles. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications so you can keep up to date with all things puzzles. And for even more puzzle content, you can check me out over on Instagram at jigsaw underscore Thanks so much and see you next time. Bye.